I was born in Jerusalem, in Israel, moved to the States when I was just a baby. And I, I actually, for the bulk of my life, lived in this country illegally. So I always, you know, I always believed in God. I just never really lived for him, you know, ever. You know, I was in, I was in the streets in New Jersey. I was selling drugs to make money because I wasn't illegal and I couldn't get a job. So I'm not making excuses. It was wrong for me to sell drugs, but that's what I did. And I'm, I'm ashamed of it, but I know that, you know, that's in the past. But that's what I was doing. And when my son was born, I realized everything had to change. I can't bring my son up in that kind of environment. So I moved to Maryland and uh, when he was a month old in February of 2007 to move in with my mother. And uh, since then I started putting the pieces of my life back together slowly, you know, trying to grow into a role model for my son and be a good father. Sometimes when things happen, we just take things for granted. You know, it's like, oh, I got my green card. Oh, so now, uh, now the complacency can begin. You know, now you can just go ahead and you don't have to worry about anything anymore. So I decided that I was just gonna continue along that path of not really searching for a purpose, just working a dead end job. Uh, I was a waiter in a restaurant, not really, uh, I had no ambition, I had no goals. I was really kind of just sitting stagnant and it took its toll on my marriage. The marriage fell apart and uh, my son and my ex-wife and myself got into a very dirty custody battle over my son which ended up with uh, us settling at a, uh, at a court and she took him and so ever since then I you know I, I felt very depressed and I felt very low because I wanted my son more than I wanted anything. I know that during that time when I lost him that that was the lowest that I ever possibly could feel and instead of turning to God and instead of, instead of doing what I should have done which was ask God for help ask him to, 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 to fix it somehow I just drank. And I just drank and I drank and I drank for months. And I didn't do anything to, to rectify the situation. I wasn't doing anything at all to, to get him back or to, to fix it at all. When I got then, all of a sudden, I was at home and I felt a mass growing on my body. And I said, you know, that's not normal. And I went to the hospital and it was, it was scary. I mean, you, when you're in your 20s, you never expect somebody to say the word cancer to you. It, that's what happens to other people. That doesn't happen to me, you know. And uh, they were, you're hooked up to this machine in the hospital and they're pumping you full of poison and you can feel it. So I called my friend who had had cancer and she sat down with me and told me about her journey. And she, she found Jesus through her journey as well. And um, she told me that I would experience kindness from complete strangers that I never expected. And it's so true. We sat down, I, I had a lot of good conversations with a lot of people in that hospital, you know, during those times. And I saw some people that were a lot worse than me. You know, it's like you, you think you're messed up with no shoes till you meet somebody with no feet, you know. I started to change my outlook a little bit. You know, and I, I told God, you know, that I was ready. And he said, I'm ready too. And I started talking about it and envisioning how life was gonna be when this was over and I was no longer sick and it was gonna be the new and improved me and God started making me feel better. And um, I went finally for my scan and uh, I went in there and they took pictures of me for about a half an hour. Next day I called my doctor and she told me I was 100% in remission. And I was actually driving to New Jersey to pick my son up when, they, when they, uh, she called me. <laughs> I almost ran my car off the road because I was so excited. I was screaming on the phone when I was yelling. I, I called everybody in my phone book, blasted the Facebook like it's over and I won glory be to God because I wasn't sure because it, you never know. There's no exact sciences in cancer. There's no definites. There's nothing that they can guarantee you ever. But it, it's over. I beat it. I'm sitting here talking to you and I feel much better than I felt prior to having cancer. And I mean, all, all in all, in every experience, you should thank God, whether it's good or it's bad. Because if it's a good thing, you should thank God because it's a good thing. But if it's a bad thing, you should thank God for the learning experience. Because if you can't, if you can't learn from these things, then they're, then they're all in vain. That happens for no reason. 
God's taken steps just because I decided that I was going to live for Him. Now, finally, for the first time, I'm feeling the sense of freedom that I never felt before. And I believe that that's what God is doing for me. And I believe that He's continuing to open doors for me in my life, you know. Just sitting here having this conversation with you is fulfilling for me because I know somebody else is going to see it. You know, I, I'm so thankful for the experience that He gave me. You know, a lot, a lot of people would, would, would say, you know, you're crazy. You thankful that you had cancer? And I, and I say, yeah, I am extremely happy that I had cancer and I'm extremely happy that I beat it. You know, but now I'm extremely happy and I'm extremely, I'm looking forward to the future with a sense of anticipation that I never was before. My name is Nicholas Patrick and I am bulletproof, battle tested and ready for the world.